Good evening, I'm Anthony Mason. President Trump declared an emergency today in Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, all threatened by the most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever seen. Images from Hartsfield Jackson at this hour. The airport appears to be in near total darkness. Thousands of passengers confused and frustrated, crowding into terminals, not sure when or even if they'll get into the air. The sight of what's become an all too familiar panic of students fleeing hands raised in single file, only matched by the images of armed tactical police racing into the building looking for the gunman. From the air, emergency crews could be seen tending to the wounded, dressing their wounds. Roughly 116,000 acres now burned. I never seen a fire like that before. Flames leaping over the Pacific Coast Highway. It's dangerous out there. This man pulling over to save a rabbit on the side of the road. Los Angeles is famed 405 freeway. Wow, look at this. A fiery hellscape. And we're also following another developing story. This one out of Flint, Michigan, where the FBI is leading the investigation into the stabbing of a police officer. It's being called a possible act of terrorism. It happened at the Bishop International Airport. That airport remains closed at this time. The suspect was taken into custody at the scene. The eye of Hurricane Maria just came ashore in Puerto Rico. The storm weakened, weakened slightly overnight to a strong Category 4, but officials there predict entire towns will have to be rebuilt. We have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the warehouse. The country music fans trapped for about 10 minutes of terror that has so far left 59 dead and more than 530 injured. 22,000 people were gathered inside barricades and this made really the effect of shooting fish in a barrel. In this newly released body camera footage, hey, right out of Everybody stay down. Stay down. Where's it at? law enforcement struggled to make sense of the chaos. Hurricanes, wildfires, blackouts, lone wolf attacks, mass shootings. This is today's reality. These are just a few of the threats our communities face or have faced. But what is on the horizon? What other threats will impact our communities moving forward? Bioengineered pandemic? Fossil fuel shortage? A collapse of our power grid? Nuclear war? None of these are outside the realm of possibility. Sometimes change comes slowly and in predictable ways, but sometimes it happens suddenly in a paradigm shifting event. How do we make sure our communities are equipped to get by in times of abrupt change? How will they respond to emerging threats? Will they panic or will they take action? To build resilience, we must proactively identify potential threats and challenges in the places we live and then assess that risk. To guide us along this path to resilience, we should not only look at our communities and experiences, but we should also examine other communities and learn about the threats they have faced and how they rebounded. Then take and apply their lessons learned. By preparing our communities for what may be lurking just around the corner, we can help mold a safer, more resilient community. Together, we must build resiliency against emerging threats.